welcome to the XY Advisor podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hey guys, Ben Nash from the XY Advisor crew and I'm super pumped to be introducing this brand new series. We're about to kick off all around the three P's of Plan Produce Profit. Now, the XY team spent a lot of time thinking about what makes a great financial advice offering, a great financial advice business. And what we distilled it down to was that there are three key elements that you need to get right to have any level of success in your financial planning business. The first is about planning and how to plan an epic service proposition that's engaging for the people that you want to work with and compelling to drive real results within your business. The second is is about producing and that's about being efficient in your business, streamlining things, maximizing the benefits of technology to uh, run a, a scalable and uh, profitable advice service. And then the third is profit, which is all about getting your message out to a bigger market. How do you attract more people into this awesome offer that you're running efficiently and scalably? So I'm taking over over the next 15 episodes. We're going to have 15 advisors with me, 100% advisors. I've had a bunch of fun with the recordings that I've done so far, the interviews, and, uh, and I've got a few more great ones to come. So I hope you enjoy this series. This episode is proudly sponsored by FE Analytics. Now, a number of XY advisors have already discovered this one-stop, easy-to-use tool that helps with investment research, analysis, portfolio construction, ongoing monitoring, and client reporting. Find out how FE Analytics can help you improve your business process, manage your existing client base, and win new business by contacting Bruce Jenner via bruce.jenner, J-E-N-N-E-R, at financialexpress.net or visit financialexpress.net for more information. Well, uh, Mr. James. Hey. An absolute pleasure. Thanks um, for having me. I reckon these days it's probably weirder for you to be on, on that end of the, of the mic. It feels good because I don't have to prep anything. I can just rock up. I don't have to carry the episode. Yeah. I can just come and chat. Uh, well, if you stopped at prep, I was about to say that I could be with you on that boat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, mate, uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for sorting out my technology issues this afternoon. No worries. Well, uh, really, I'm a noob. Need pros like you to uh, to help me with such things. And let's uh, let's cross our fingers. So this is the tenth episode in this series, and I've been getting a lot of shit from the XY crew because I keep fucking up the audio. And you know, um, I'm saying I, I said fourth time lucky, but then it strung on for a bit longer. So now I'm going tenth time lucky. Uh, thank you for bearing with me. Every, My pleasure, everyone. So, uh, mate, pumped. Pump, pump, pump to have you here for uh, the for the first in the third part, third and final part of this series on plan produce profit. Um, we've spent a lot of time talking about the three pillars of a successful financial advice business, which is planning an epic and compelling service proposition. Um, producing which is running your business efficiently that's what we've just been talking about got some great efficiency tips from a bunch of, of great advisors and uh and this is all about profit which is not necessarily about the money but it's about it's about getting your message to the masses and mate uh as i said to you in my email i couldn't have done this part of the series without you because uh, the the podcast and and uh the, yeah the, the specifically the podcast uh has just exploded uh, crazy. You were saying top 5% of podcasts in the world. Unbelievable. And yeah, I, I think that that's one, one of the, the tenets that you need to, to get to be successful. You've uh, you, interesting story that maybe gone a little bit the, the other way uh, with the, with the world of online uh, everything, but, uh, but mate, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Can't wait, you know, getting that message to the mass is critical for, for any advice business. So hoping to, uh, you know, squeeze the squeeze a bit of the, that gold out to yeah. see what advisors can learn and but i guess before we go on do you edit these do you cut anything out no this? okay i'll be very gentle then <laughs> but if you want to have last cut you absolutely can but I, i'd imagine i would uh, like to have last cut <laughs> of course but uh you know any any uh, you're you're pretty diplomatic these days with you know, i am i'm very diplomatic you're running in actually there was a someone did an article on me the other day in the media and I said, "Oh, can you flick me a coffee before I um, before it goes up?" And they said, "Nope." 
<laughs> so apparently the real world media, you don't get a say. <laughs> yes. They yeah. just report. That's a definite thing. Yeah. You've yeah. just got to watch the, the P's and Q's. Old uh, Georgie Thompson, she gave us some good old uh, media training back in the day and uh, told us just that lesson. Everything is on the record. Mm. Um, We've got a lot of lot of friendlies in the AFA XY community, though, thankfully, so they make it a little bit easier for us. Yeah. So where is this episode going? Is it just on the podcast, the XY podcast? The podcast? Are you asking me questions? You know this is the podcast, right? Is We're it? not editing. Yes. Yeah. This okay. Yeah, this is sweet. Or are you just sussing out how our <laughs> podcasting skills work? I'm just this curious. Right. We're talking. You, you just jump into the start. And, yeah, that's yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, we've started. We've oh, totally I think started. It's my podcast, I run the live intro music in our ears. And it, we, oh, right. So yeah, okay. It's it's starting. Starting. Production, right? Yeah. Okay, well, doo, 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 doo. so anyway, uh, can we start yes. this? Can yes. we start this again? Uh, no, okay, I've rescinded the last cut rights. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, so look, yeah, message to the masses T- just just because so you were running, you've been an advisor for how long? Uh, I think over 10 years now, 10 years running your business, Fortify Financial, yeah. Uh, might be longer than sandy, 10 years sandy yeah coast. Yes, sandy coast what up um cr- you know pretty cracking little business in its own right um and yeah like we we i, I know that we we sort of uh, bonded a little bit over fincon uh back in oh the back end of the year before last was it 17 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, October-ish. Yep. Um, Dallas. That's right. And I got engaged. Beautiful wife. Shout out, Yang. Um, what up, Yang? She listens to all your episodes. No, nah, she doesn't. <laughs> she never listens. Um, but, yeah, so at that time, you were sort of in this interesting transition where the appeal of online marketing and making money in your underwear clearly mm. it, is a strong one. Um, but you, your business was actually doing really great at that time as well. Had a growing team. Um, doing some really good things and you have pivoted to sort of focus focus more on think but actually the theme of that fincon was all about podcasts they were massive 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 on podcasts really yeah well i i t- like my first podcast sort your money out i took my gear up and i recorded like 12 That's episodes right. yeah i remember that I yeah. Remember that. yeah so um yeah that was really cool and so, but things have changed a little bit now. You, you've essentially, you sold your financial advice. You downscaled, then you sold it. Yeah, I've merged it with another business. We use the word merge when we're right. talking with clients. Right, merge, yeah, yep. of course. Perfect. Um, diplomatic as always. Yes. And, now, and now really the main focus is on online training and the podcast. So just uh, tell us a bit about the, the journey and, and where, where your head was at. Yeah, so I basically... I've always wanted to do stuff online. Uh, like it started even in 2010, 2011, I did a whole heap of online apps for kids and because I wanted to make an app for my niece, uh, Grace. So we did this thing and yeah, like I just, I just know that everyone walks around with a shop in their pocket, right? Everyone does. So yep. I really wanted to do something that could be scalable and online. So yep. that was kind of, and I was involved with, Google had this startup ecosystem over at Piermont called, uh, I forget what they called it, Google Sudo? No, it was Google Sudo. Oh. Yeah, so, um, so it was a free startup community that Google was running like in 2010, 2011. And uh-huh. that was just amazing inspiration. And then and I had my own business happening and built the financial planning business up to the point mm-hmm. where you know, I had a handful of staff. I... They all got their awards each year at the Christmas party. They did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did goofy like <laughs> awards. And you hold them up. Like um, I had one guy, Ross. Shout out Ross, who doesn't listen to this, but you know he was the granny whisperer of the year. Yeah. So yeah, we had a lot of fun, and there was a big growing team. And what what happened? And you know, I, I did a couple of the um, client surveys, like with the Beddoes Institute and Core Data, and it got to the point where. In the Beto's report, it was like the benchmark was it's like your score is this, top score is this, and then like the maximum score was this, and my score was higher than their template. So right. it kind of yeah. like I, I really had the business and the client engagement thing nailed, uh, won the one of the awards at MLC for the client engagement award. So yeah, I really had that humming along, and it became apparent as the business was growing that one – I wasn't good at managing people. 
and Very two, cool. um, I I was pretty much a finder, not a minder. So hmm. I these clients, I didn't know how to review a client, like just struggled. Like, yeah, sorted you like. So my kind of skill, for want of a better word, with the client would be taking them from absolute basket case financially, clearing yeah. up all their stuff, yeah. getting them on a platform to then go and yeah. Uh, where some advisors just want to know how much can I invest for you or like. So I kind of got to the point where business was humming along. I was probably only working three, four days a week max in it, earning mm. good money, and I just needed a new challenge. And after FinCon, I, um, as soon as I landed in Sydney at the end of 2017, I sent out a text to like, hey, like six people, hey, you want to buy a business? Like I was to the point where I was yeah. like, I'm out of like, Mad. I just want to do something different. It was, I loved all my clients and I still work with them. Um, I look after about 10 clients at the moment. Right. Um, so I don't know where that will head, but um I love being an advisor. I love helping people. Yep. Uh, but my, I just want a new challenge. And that was how can I impact as many people as possible um, and have a bit of fun doing it? Yeah. So, and I already had a podcast, Sort Your Money Out, which I've just changed the name to uh, another a name because I wanted to, I want a podcast where a lot of people go, I want to come on your show. And it's like, well, you don't really fit any of the molds. So, yeah. I'm doing one now that's going to just be a um, a chat type of podcast and I'll interview anyone or pushing people to my main um, content pillar, I guess. Right. So, yeah, so fast forward. Um, so you started with the, you started with the Sort Your Money Out podcast yeah. and then, and that did good. Yeah, but what happened was um, one-on-one interview style podcasts that, it's kind of dead-ish now. Like, like all yeah, right, I know, sure. right. Well, yours is different because this is like an industry niche thing. Yeah. Um, like, unless you're Andrew Denton or something, it's just, it has changed a little bit. Like, two, three years ago, mm-hmm. one-on-one interview, it was cool, but it kind of moved a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, that's why I, I started one with two other people on the show and wanted to make it infotainment and a little bit more engaging. So, And it sort of, it sort of blew up pretty Pretty quick yeah. from that point, right? Yeah, it, it did. Um, and there was some marketing strategy involved in that. Like, I would, if you wanted to be a guest on the show, part of the, the condition was you need to pay to sponsor our episode on your social media. So, so I was getting people to pay to come on. But so, yeah, so you want to come on your show and talk about yeah. pivot wealth. Yeah. That's cool. But you need to spend $200, $300 on sponsoring the post through your networks. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. just promoting it on your like Facebook or whatever. Yeah, or Instagram, yeah. Okay. So basically like I'd have different companies come on and different people. Yeah. It was a value add for them because they had different interesting content to push yeah. out to their audience. I see. So I kind of used other people's money to... to right. James like, Millard must be going broke then. Hasn't he been on like 100 episodes or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out, James. <laughs> My boy. You mean the dolphin? Yeah. What up? Yeah, he's probably surfing though. Yeah. I no, called him the other day. He's like, oh, I'm just at the beach. My phone's on 1%. <laughs> it's 9.30 a.m. Like, yeah, it's like yeah, I've been here for three days. It's yeah. like there's no charging dock in the, so in the ocean. Sort him out all the leads I've sent him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, and so what, so what do you, what were the strategies that you use? So clearly that's one of them where you're getting people to, to push it out. Um, what were the what were the other strategies that you because you were using the um, Lala Social is that was yeah, that in the early use, days yeah still use Laura from yep. Lala Social Club so she does like our I guess branding ish Instagram so yep. we're pretty heavy on Instagram yeah uh, spend a bit of money on Instagram marketing um, but my whole strategy was uh, and this can work in your financial planning business right like you've got to define your audience yeah just tailor everything to them so. The average listener of My Millennial Money is a 26-year-old female. Right. So I've got a 26-year-old female doing the social media. Like, yeah, we're just playing to the audience. Now, there are 30% males. Yeah. There are people who listen who are 50 years old. Yeah. Everyone thinks they're younger than what they are. So yeah, of course. We, that's our avatar. So, you know, if you're a guest on the show, I will send you something before you come on. And say, 
people don't know what a self-managed super fund is. People don't know what oh, yeah. depreciation means. Like, yeah, this is the level of yeah. financial literacy. So I got in trouble. I did a workshop a couple of weeks ago, or actually maybe it was a couple of months ago, and uh, <clears throat> I got annihilated by this attendee on my feedback form because she said that I used too much jargon and. I'm not a jargony sort no. of person. I, I think up. jargon. I don't think of you. Yeah, and I and so I was like, I called her up and I was like, "What is?" I was like, "I must know. Like, what is the jargon? Like, what did I do that upset you?" And she said, "Blue chip." <laughs> that's <laughs> barely a, even like investment term. But there you go, man. Like yeah. that's the. I think people are so confused when it comes to money that it's the. Uh, that things like that, that we it just so co- you talk about depreciation that people don't understand, but people don't understand what blue chip is. Yeah, and then they sit there going, fuck, I'm dumb. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And that's it. Like you got to confuse them enough to want to get help. That's what you do. Isn't it? Right. No, that's no. Not. we're about total transparency and empowerment, man. I think you like show them the, show them the behind the curtain. Love it. Uh, Love it. You know, demi- yeah. So I think like you've got to play to your audience and actually know that. So basically, I run my podcast like I ran my financial planning business. Mm-hmm. So confuse it, them enough to, uh, to make, make, yeah, exactly. No, no. <laughs> so what you do in my business, I had systems and processes. Do people watch this? Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, set up your business and all your processes so people feel your clients feel like they're your only client. Mm. and in the background it's a sausage factory and you've got systems and processes but in your language in your emails like we had like you fin- so after every meeting we had an automatic email that went out and the language in the template was like hey ben thanks for popping by just let you know we're onto this um please remember to send through the things cheat like so it felt like they were our only client yeah. So the process was the same. In the background, there's obviously different steps to the advice process and tailored advice. Yeah. But at the front end, I treat people like they're my only client at scale. Now, yeah. how does that translate though on the podcast? Well, when, when I've got the microphone and they even we did an episode today and you, you may even hear me if um, you listen to any of the episodes, I will stop and go, hey, I'm talking to you. You might be on a freeway in Perth. You might be on a tractor in West Dubbo because we've got people that listen everywhere. Yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm like, I'm acknowledged that you might be in this position. So you talk to people like mm-hmm. they are your listener. Right. Listener. I see. So just the mindset of we're not just throwing out blanket crap. Yes. We're having conversation with people. Mm. And they engage in the Facebook group. They engage on Instagram. And yeah, I, I, I just treat everyone. I, I guess, yeah, I just, Treat my podcast like it was my business. Yeah. Same concept. Good. Yeah. I think it's important. No one wants to feel dumb, especially if you're in that younger uh, market. And I think we had Vince on um, Silver Fox, the, the, the old Silver Fox. And I, I think that his target client is probably the same. I think he said it was 26 year old female. Brought, yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of really detailed profiling and that allowed him to drive a lot of efficiencies in his business mm. as well. Um, he must be, like he must be having a sore shoulder from rolling in all his all of his money. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah, he just loves it. Yeah, he just yeah. loves. Business. Yeah, well, I actually get Vince on my podcast when yeah. I've got confusing topics that I need for him to explain. <laughs> <laughs> he does know lots of things. Yeah, he's great. Well, he's a wealth of knowledge, the old uh, Mister Scully. So, so, but yeah, look, um, uh, yeah, I th- I think that that that. Obviously, that's something that no, like for financial advice, financial advisors, money stuff, the people have feel, felt dumb. So clearly, there's a good, uh, there's a good um, product for want of a better word at the at the back end, which is the pro- the podcast and the training and the bits and pieces that you do. But yeah. it takes more. That I think as a lot of financial planners can relate to, it takes more than a compelling product and a good product to to create a massive audience, which is something that you've done super successfully. So. You, so, what would you say were the key, the key um, tactics or strategies that that led to the that initial sort of takeoff? I think if if something's good, you're going to tell other people about it. Yeah. 
like if you go and have a nice meal or something and it's amazing. Oh, actually, I'll, I'll step back. So that's number one. So number two, we started, um, I put in the comedy charts because everything I try and do is opposite to what most people do. So maybe yeah. most people start a money podcast starting business where I wanted it to be oh. infotainment. So fun, right. not heavy. Yeah. I wanted it to be so if people discovered podcasts, they would they might pick up their phone. All right, well, I'm here for entertainment, like in the masses. So in the yeah. main, like people who are watching the Batchy or whatever show is like those type of audience where it's like I just want to consume it. In, um, entertainment. Mm. So I put in comedy. So if someone jumps in the comedy section and scrolls through, and I think it was only maybe four months into it that we started charting. So, okay. Um, so they would look through the comedy, which section. is massive, right? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Like to get to that point, yeah. that's not to be underestimated. Yeah, totally. It was so cool. It's, yeah. it's a lot of uh, like, what what sort of level of downloads would you need to to get be start getting pushing into the chart? I, I reckon maybe a thousand an episode. Okay, I think yeah, yeah maybe. maybe it's a couple of thousand a month. It might be more. I think that the X Y one gets into the we sort of flit in and out of the yeah out of the two hundred the top two hundred yeah and we're about two thousand ish a month. Yeah, I don't know if it plays on the mic. But, yeah, um, but. So, but, but, it's, but it's a so decent chunk, right? What I wanted to do was like somebody, most people know that they need help with their money. I wanted them to be in the comedy section. Yep. Going, all right, let's see some entertainment. Oh, my money, money. Oh, I need to sort my money out. Yeah. I'll have a listen. Yep. So I went in that way. Yep. Uh, and that's, they are. I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And just recently I've moved it over to the education system. Uh, education section section right because i uh and it's three o'clock so yesterday my jet lag started to hit at this time so i might go downhill fast <laughs> um, <laughs> um so yes what am i saying put it in the education i put it in the education section yeah because i asked our listeners hey what do you think our podcast should be in now business right. comedy education other whatever uh-huh and most like ninety percent of people in the Facebook group said put it in education. Okay. And so, did you start the Facebook group at the same time as the podcast? Oh, a little bit before. Right. I had the Facebook group before I started my Millennial Money, and then I changed it to my Millennial Money. Okay. And how many people are at the oh, Facebook group when you launched think, the podcast? Would you say? Oh, six hundred. Okay. Yeah. And do you think that? Oh, there would have been less than six hundred people in there. Right. Yeah. And so you took. So if you want to start a Facebook group. Until we got to about 800, no one posted anything. It was weird. It was like everyone was too scared. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. I think but it scares me, the idea of the Facebook group, just with the driving the engagement. But um, do you think that that's something that, you know, if you want to have a really successful podcast that you, that you need to have a Facebook group? Well, I think it makes sense to be able to talk with your community because I'm building a community of people. Yeah. And... I like to engage. I like to feel the pulse. I like the feedback. Like I yep. put up something today. It's like, hey, what did everyone think about today's episode? Within 10 seconds, I will know. Yeah. If I, wanna, if, I, if I ever get, I always worry like I'm going to run out of content. And I just ask people, what do you want me to do? Yeah. So I've, I've now built the community that I am not the guru. I'm just a god yeah. Goodness. <laughs> Far out. This is a train <laughs> wreck over here. <laughs> I am just the facilitator yeah like that's all i'm doing i'm cultivating this group mm. and i will lead us through the choppy waters of life <laughs> um, but the cool thing is john my co-host he's like a teacher by education so he loves like, yeah okay teaching and coaching people so yeah it's really cool and so how did you because you're doing the podcast by yourself and then you've and then you got two co-hosts yeah. now how did how did that yeah, so out? i I tell the story, you know how you have a shower in the morning and you have a hundred ideas, but 99 of them suck. Yeah. Like, just amazing at the time. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to do more online content. Like I need to be dishing out constant content. Yeah. So I called my mate, John, who's, he's a property coach. So okay. in my financial planning business, if I ever got property zombies, I'd be like, Hey, I can sort out your super and insurance, but you may as well go and pay John to coach you through a property strategy because 
I don't want your money. I can't add value. Yeah. So he's a fee-for-service property coach. So like, oh, so really valuable. So I called John and I'm like, hey, let's start a podcast. He's like, yeah, sweet. And I said, all right, we need to get somebody who's not in finance as well. Yeah. To be. So I, I put it on uh, Facebook. Hey, are there any opinionated sassy chicks who want to be on a podcast? Right. And I got all these like girls and women and everyone that I knew. Yeah. And Erin, who was a lawyer and a referral source that I knew from, you know, socially kind of anyway. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I'll do it. So okay. I had Erin on, so she didn't know anything about the money world. So it was good that um, we would say something. So she would stop and ask. So it'd be like the listener advocate. Yep. So that was valuable. Uh, but at the start of this year, she just couldn't commit the time anymore because it had really taken off. And mm. we all agreed at the start, we will give this 12 months, hell uh, or high water. Yeah. Like we get three listens an episode, we're plowing through. Yep. So that's, I would say as well in your business, like set, I don't know, like lines in the sand. It's yeah. like, I'm doing this until this. At this point, clearing the table, just having a chat, is this working or not? If it's not working, freaking move on. Yes. Or change big time. Yeah, but also to have the commitment to see it. You've see got it to commit to it yeah. in the early days. Because yeah. I think that that's something that it's so easy that you're, yeah. uh, you get to, you know, the, all these different ideas and then you're, and then you're going, oh, well, I'll start your online training course and then a podcast and then a Facebook group and then, mm-hmm. People are going shit, and it is—it's a lot more work than it than it yes, looks like. You've got to commit. You've got to be around. Like you've actually, there's a book Seth Godin. It's called The Dip. Yes, I've yeah. read that. Yeah, everyone just read that. It's a two second read. Yeah, and it's just you've just got to be there. And a year's time, if someone wants to pick up their phone and look for a podcast, are you going to still be there? Yeah. If someone wants to pick up their Google device and Google financial advisor, local or whatever. Yeah, his time. Are you going to be there for that future customer? Yeah, that's the whole thing. So, uh, and then so now it's just John and myself, and Laura from La La Social Club. She's a very good friend of mine as well. Yeah, um, I've told her that because I want a female voice on there. Yeah, like every time we do an episode, I send her a calendar invite. If she's around, she'll drop in and be on the episode. Okay, without any um, prior needing to research anything right just i'm yeah. being a chat i like that and so, so there was a few commercial things there that you know she won't be on the cover art or whatever uh because she can't commit but yeah so it's just it's fun mm, i like it and so like for, for someone that's thinking about going down this path there, there's some like obviously you give some solid tips already like niche your make sure you understand your market talk to them uh, make it a you know so it's not a, just a just a blanket message. But and don't really, be boring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then again, it could be a niche that people want it to be boring. Yeah. Well, I can't please everybody. I know. I think I just, boring people probably don't want to listen to boring. Yeah. Boring. So I think it's yeah. Solid, solid. But what do you think the key? Yeah, the key thing or 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 things that. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to start a podcast, don't eat a burger through your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I turned it off. Yeah. And I don't need to watch and listen to a guy eating a burger trying to have a conversation. Um, okay, so, and leave that in there. <laughs> so you've got to, if you want to start a podcast, the best time ever to do one is probably two years ago. <laughs> yes. The next best time is now. Because like even today, FM, did you see that they've just about to ditch their morning talk show like all the presenters and just to have music in the morning? Who? Today, FM. Oh, right. I saw some article this week. Oh, okay. No, I'm not into that. Neither am I. I just saw it online. But radio is dying. Uh Uh-huh. People are moving to podcasts and the big money are moving to podcasts. Yeah. What that means is the big money moves to the podcasts. They've already got distribution of people. So they can just run a radio ad. Hey, we're now doing a podcast that's exclusive and different content. They get a million people just subscribe the next day yeah the top of the charts and stay there mm. because they've already got distribution yes the more money that has the big distribution that does that they're going to cloud the top 200 yes so if you want to be seen in the charts it might be too late it might not be you've just got to have distribution yeah so get started now you've got to work out your strategy why are you doing it but yeah, the charts are a bit of a vanity metric. Like, great, yeah, of course, it's it's good to uh, to have that in there. Yeah, but, but no, but for discoverability, 
if you want randoms to fight, oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. you want to be like, yeah, or even like in the business section or comedy section or whatever, you want to be in the, like it's a humble brag moment, but this morning my podcast was in the top shows in the business section, top shows in comedy and top shows in education. Amazing. So that's three different sections mm-hmm. that Apple have featured the podcast and that's yeah. free advertising. Well, that's where you want to get it with all of those. And I think it's the same with Facebook groups and yeah. the different bits and pieces that the more traction you can get, then you get the platforms promoting your Absolutely. Stuff. And the bigger you get as well. So if you Google like Glenn James podcast or some crap like that, there's so many different blogs that have blocked top five money podcasts to listen to and you get other people promoting you. That's yeah. another way that I got promotion. Right. And yeah. did you, uh, did you uh, sort of strategically do that? No. Or? They, yeah. One, they'll pick it up without you knowing yeah. or two, ask to interview. Right. So it was weird. Right. Like, and again, you just don't know what's going to happen like, and you don't know who's listening. So I got a, an email from a, someone the other day. Hey, I'm from a PR agency. We represent Facebook and Instagram in Australia. We want to do an article on you on pedestrian TV. And they did that. Right. So and they, their readership is big. So yeah, and I said to them, I said, yeah, that's – and I've learned – whoops um, – you don't ask, you don't get. So what I do now, any type of those things, I'm like, yeah, that's totally fine. But you've got to, in your article, I need you to reference my millennial money and here's the link I want you to send people to. Yeah, that's so, good. Yeah, I do the same with any any media type stuff totally, that you want to link totally. back. It helps with SEO. Totally. And the- so you've just, so it's, there's all these strategies that I'm running in the background where mm-hmm. they might be small, but they bloody all add up. They all, yeah, it's a cumulative sort See, of. Yeah, work out your strategy. Like, why are you doing it? Who's it for? What's the goal? So, I think there's two ways of doing it. Yeah. Number one, have your strategy. I'm going straight out there to get new business for my business. Okay. Number one, if you're going to do that, you need to be able to deliver advice from the internet. I get leads from Perth every freaking week. You yeah. know what I mean? And you're getting, we were just chatting about this offline, what sort of numbers of, of oh, inquiries are you getting? Is it really, I get, clearly the people need help, right? Yeah, so oh, I probably get five leads a day on average. Which is people that are saying that they want some sort of... Yeah, help. like if you go to sortyourmoneyout.com and click get help, you'll see the form that I get people to fill. And it's the stage I ask them, like if they're single, got a partner, what's your income, what's your state, what's your location, what do you need help with? Yeah. Do you want to speak to a mortgage broker, financial advisor? People give you all the information. Right. So I and get a, you've got a panel of people. Yeah, I've got a panel of advisors and mortgage brokers that I found them out to. Right. Yeah. Very good. You want to be on the panel? I've, well, you've already yeah, uh, we're, 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 yeah. a couple of people. So, so And again, there's... I don't pay the comm loan. No, right. that's right. But having said that, so a listener emailed me the other day that, I referred to somebody and they said, oh, I just want to know how to get paid. And I said, yeah, I take a referral fee and it will be disclosed to you. But there are instances where I know that, Ben, you are the best person mm. to this lead. Yeah. I don't care if I get any. Like there was one in Townsville yeah. the other day. Yeah. I'm like, I got no one in Townsville. So I tracked down an advisor in Townsville. I didn't know that, you know, part of the AFA or whatever. But, yeah, I'll take a referral fee. Absolutely. I'm not running a charity. Uh, sure. At the end of the day, I'm not going to reverse someone out to someone that's not appropriate. Of course, and that's because you're, you know, you're building a. It's like anyone. I think any professional that some businesses oh, we don't do it at, at Pivot because it's just inconsistent with the fee only nature of what we do. But we we will introduce people to other professionals and other advisors do as well. But you're not going to burn something. You're not going to introduce someone to someone that's shit because then they're going to get pissed off and then it's like, right. and you get a bad review well, on you. It. So I've got to manage my reputation, yeah. which is going to be hard to do. Um, so, yeah, and so it's either you're going out yep. to the market to get leads for your business yep, or you are doing a podcast yes. just for your existing clients. Yep. But it should in turn get them talking and to, for them to tell other people. Mm. But I think your headline strategies are different. Or yours is, which is just grow an audience, right? And well. Yeah, but why are you growing the audience? Yes. To sell stuff to? Oh, yeah. So that the online capability yeah. is what you're talking about. Or, yeah. So, so for me, I make money from, uh, I've got an online course that's a cash flow management course, which I'm now white labeling. So if someone, can I promote my chat on this? Podcast? Mate, go for it. Go hard. Yeah, so, if you go to sortyourmoneyout.com and you'll see this Glenn James spending plan on there, people are going to log into Teachable 
and they do my online course at $70 or like $69. I'm now white labeling that for mortgage brokers and maybe risk only advisors who want to add value to their prospects. So imagine yeah. this, like you don't do cash flow in your business, mm. but you want to have a service that people can, you could do it before. So you get a new lead. Hey, how you going? If you don't have a budget or cash flow, we're going to need some info about your spending. Please log in here, yeah. watch the videos. You might learn something, fill out the spreadsheet, bring it into the meeting. They can see that it's $69, but you've given them a complimentary pass. It's got your branding on it. Yep. Or if you're in the first meeting and you're, particularly for the riskies out there, it was so funny. I used to do this cash flow off in my business and I'm primarily a risk. I'm a risky part, right? Yep. I love, love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what I would do is do the cash. So we had packages in the business, like this package is risk only, this is risk and super, this is yeah. So as part of a comprehensive one, I'll do the cash flow and you go and present the risk plan. I add 12 grand a year in premiums and the clients have a stroke because it's a lot of money. <laughs> oh, I don't think we can afford it. And I turn the laptop around. Yeah, you can, baby. I factored it into your spending plan. Yeah. It's possible. You can still save money. I love that. I'm in sales. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> I would joke with people. It's like, not my first rodeo. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> That's a great one, though. That I I find that that what we do with with clients because we charge a you know substantial our ongoing fee is like five to ten thousand absolutely, and people go and we talk about it in the strategy meeting mm. and the and and say to the people like oh yeah at the end of that we're always like because it's before the advice presentation and we want them to be clear on what's going to happen so we don't freak them out and we say you know this is our ongoing fee which they already know about anyway but. Um, they, and then everyone, as, lo, as long as they know that it's factored into the plan and that they're still able to have all of the things that we've just spoken about for two hours that they really, really absolutely, want, and they can have the help to make sure that happens, then yeah, it's so it's a no brainer to if you like, you know, if you're in the risk side of the business or whatever. So, even so, the, my course for me started, I wanted to do one because I was sick of telling friends of friends because people go, Oh, I speak to Glenn, speak yeah. to Glenn. I was actually, I love it, but I was just getting. You repeat yourself. Yes. And I'd often do it for free, whatever. Mm. And so I got to the point where I developed the online course and spending plan. Mm. And because I used to do face to face seminars and um, I had all the content coffee, there. Coffee on the couch or something? Or was that just a photo of you? Having it was just a, just a photo of me. Yeah. yeah. Having coffee. Coffee. Loved it. Oh, nice. I shaved my head. Um, so I would, when I, in the, in the first client meeting, no. number one, I'd always charge at least $220 for the first meeting. Yeah. So if you want to meet with me, you know, you go to your accountant, you pay, you rent to a lawyer, you go to a dentist. Like if you want to be in professional services, which we are, mm. you will be okay with paying for it. And yeah. you don't want to pay, that's sweet. Yeah. But anyway, at, they just don't get to see you. Um, I had a coffee with my accountant the other day, he sent me a bill for 1200 bucks at the end. Of it. I was like, Fuck, all right. Oh, just for a coffee. Yeah. Well, yeah. apparently it thought about the coffee, either side of the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, I would say to people, absolutely, you need a spending plan, you're in debt, your life's a freaking financial mess. Yeah. So you've got two options. You can pay me $3,300, I'll sit down with you for four meetings and I'll personally coach you and your spouse or partner through this and get you on track. Hmm. Okay. Or, or you can jump online right now when you get home, watch the videos yourself, it's 50 bucks. You choose. Yeah. I'm making money from both. Yeah. Yeah, yes. maybe so, more from maybe more from the fifty dollar option. If absolutely, you in terms of my time, bring yeah, half and all the box ticking that needs to go along. Yeah, along. so that's how it happened. So I just think it all goes back to strategy. Why are you doing things? Yeah. Um, and then if you are going to do a podcast, um, is it short form or long form? Mm. You know, is it Joe Rogan two and a half hours, or is it? 40 minutes or 10 minutes. And so, cause you've done a whole bunch of different ones, right? Yeah. You did some five minute, like yeah, snappy so ones. We, and we got a, and that's funny. The people who re really review podcasts negatively are the hardcore people and they're not actually fans of your show. Yeah. They're just passing, have a listen. Oh, this is crap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sorry. Can't please you. They'll give you a one star review. Um, and we'd read them and try and the stuff. Yeah. But some people were like, Oh, I don't like the banter. So I had to reshuffle the podcast and now we put the banter at the very end after the credits. Right. 
we'd be screwed if we did not. Yeah. Have <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought I need to do an express podcast. Yeah. So I was thinking I'm going to do a podcast for the podcast. So the podcast was a short clip of a show. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I did Money Money Express. Yep. And that's like less than 10 minutes. If I've got a topic, I want to just get out there. Yeah. And it helps me now because our main show, like we've got the next six, seven episodes locked in scheduled, social media scheduled, everything scheduled. Like yeah. We're not recording for a couple of weeks, like having a bit of a break, but everything's still running like clockwork. Yeah. If I wake up one morning and go, oh, I want to have a rant about freaking Afterpay again or something like that, mm. I just record it on the Express podcast, 10 minutes straight to the point, no banter. Bam. Yep. And then I, I I did a heap of interviews with some 19 and 20 year olds mm -hmm. and worked out that this is completely different. Like I can't put this episode up on the main show and chalk and cheese. So that's when I started the Gen Z podcast. Right. So that launched last fortnight. So what, I, what? And then we've got a property one that's just property. And so what, what are the durations though? So you got a 10 minute one and then you got one. Yes. Yeah, so my millennial money is one hour. Yeah. My millennial money express is probably 10 minutes under Gen Z money is under 20 minutes. Yep. And my millennial money property is under half an hour. And so do you think that it's driven by the audience as to the, as to the duration or is it, is there a, is it, is there a duration that works better? Yeah. Oh. We started at 35 minutes an episode, but we found that we couldn't go deep. Yeah. So we like to keep them to about an hour. Okay. And I'm thinking about changing it up where we just, so at the moment we're kind of discussing one topic for the lion's share of the show. Then we'll answer listener questions at the end or stuff like that. Yeah. I'm slowly thinking about maybe changing it and doing like three segments. Like we'll talk about this and then we'll talk about an article in the media. Yeah then we'll answer questions. It's a moving beast, but I'm about to send out a, a survey to all the listeners. Okay. Just to see what they want. Right. Because I'm creating a podcast for them. I'm just, remember, I'm just, cult I'm I'm just cultivating the community. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, for sure. And like you, you mentioned it before that the, really the greatest resource is there. You've got people that already like and listen to your stuff and, and then you ask them. Probably and a lot more smart people than me. Yeah, well, Even me saying that, I fumbled it. <laughs> yes. Like it was smartly. ironic. Smartly. Yeah. Smartly. So, <laughs> yeah. So, but it's also that as financial planners, it's like how do we, we don't necessarily know what someone that wants to know more about their money wants exactly. to know about because we yeah. already know stuff about exactly. financial. So, so it's a humbling thing that like some of the questions that I get like, oh, should I pay off my $5,000 credit card? I've got twelve thousand dollars cash in the bank. Yeah, when I miss out on the interest. Yeah, I'm oh, like, a lot of confusion out there. Yeah, I'm like, that's crazy. But they want to know what they should do. Yeah, I've done a lot of Q and A stuff with when I was doing Koshi's thing, um, it, and those those one that was the most common question that I that I would get on there from people was. Uh, would, should I save, pay off my mortgage or pay off my credit card? Yeah. And really it's, for us, it just seems like such a basic thing that you go, well, the numbers say this, you know, uh, common sense says, you know, this. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's easy to fall into the trap of, of thinking that these solutions are easy when really it's people that people are really confused. Yeah. So, and then before you want to get start, started, but yeah, totally agree with you. I wasn't ignoring you. Uh, work out how often you're dropping an episode. We committed to weekly. And then last, at the start of this year, it was our first kind of holiday season because we're, we're only new. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, Merry Christmas all. Good night. Um, that was the December Christmas Eve. I think we did an episode. Yeah. First week of January and in, the, in between Christmas and Boxing Day, I got a big spike. Oh. People are freaking at home bored. Yeah. I'm relaxed. I'm away from work. Yeah. Oh, I might try and pick up podcast. Something. Yeah. So, so I called, Aaron was away. I called Johnny into the studio. I'm like, mate, we've got to get here now. Yeah. We've got to do one on like setting goals of the year. So yeah, I'm going to be re very strategic this year in the holiday season. I like it. Well, yeah. that's for us. It's like, 
And I think for that market, it's really the biggest thing. Right? Oh, weirdly, like starting my business, oh. when I was hungry for work, oh, I made more money in the Christmas holidays than any other time of the year. Because you can just tell people, hey, I'm working right through. Let's do it yeah. while you've got downtime. Yeah. Just, and then, get through. And then yeah. later in years, I actually literally didn't want to work. So I told yeah. them I'll be back in six weeks. Yeah. Um, and then write down at least 20 episodes. If you can't write down 20 topics in a row, yep. Not even don't even enough. start. Yeah. Um, get some good gear. Like the Blue Yetis. <laughs> and, my, and my awesome mixer. Yeah, the, bl- the Blue Yetis. Is- so I had one of these mics. Yeah. And they're rubbish, but whatever. That's okay. But... I took it to FinCon last year and there was this young kid there. Shout out. He doesn't listen. Anyway, I'm like, I know I recorded an episode with him and I'm like, I don't even want this mic anymore. So I gave it to him. <laughs> he hit the lottery. He loved it. So, um, so yeah. And just work out like, is it an interview style? Is it going solo? Is it a panel discussion? Mm. Like, what's your thing? Pros and cons. And I think it depends on the person as well. As Absolutely. As what you can do, you know, Adrian, Patty, get him on a podcast one-on-one. Fuck me. You're, uh, you're, you're in the weeds. That's that's an hour and a half. And as well, just like there are people who do podcasts. Don't put your general advice disclaimer at the very start. Yeah. Yeah, lawyers. Lawyers oh. want you to do that. Even the online course stuff that it's like you have to do these technologies. Yeah, it's just, it's gone, it's gone too far. I think that's licensee driven though. Really. Yeah. Oh, Although, some people don't have a choice around absolutely. that. Absolutely. get a choice on your license. So yeah. Power to the people. Mate, look, I, honestly, we could talk about this all day uh, and, and uh, maybe we will, but, uh, we won't. but uh, what, where do you reckon people go wrong? What's the biggest mistake that people make when they try? Cause I think we're talking podcasts, but this translates to, I think a lot of this scalable sort of well, stuff. But like any of the things that I've kind of said, Apply it to your business. Like, what's your actually strategy? Like, are you wanting to help everyone? And to be honest, you know, the ideal client for my business, do you guess, can you guess what that, what it was? I don't know, 48-year-old divorcee. With over a net worth of 2 million, yes. No. <laughs> um, it's a different, different target. So, for Fortify Financial, the ideal client for me, they had to meet two criterias. Okay. Willing to pay and valued my advice. Yeah. It's a psychographic more than a demographic. This is something totally. that I see. It's people that want to, de- we had Dean Holmes on the podcast a couple of weeks ago and uh, it's people that want to, for him it was people that wanted to delegate. Mm. And I think he called them engaged delegators or something. Yeah. Where it's like they want to delegate. They know that they don't, they can't or shouldn't do it all themselves. But then they also, they're engaged that they're not just, they're not just advocating responsibility. Yeah. I think yeah. that's, you know, we, people that value advice because then you don't end up in these silly conversations oh, with people no. trying to justify stuff. And so, yeah, like the systems and processes that I had, you know, I had an 83-year-old client and I managed her wealth. Mm. Like she built out the online fact find. And don't be afraid. People can use technology. Yeah. It's all in your head if you're worried about, oh, my clients don't want to do a digital fact find. Like, the process is the same, but the key points are going to be different for every single client. Yeah. Because every single piece of advice isn't the same. Yeah. So for me, it was like, I'm happy to, the more people I help, the more money I will make. Yeah. Unapologetically. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's business. Yeah. And I wasn't in business to not make lots of money because you carry too much risk. Agreed. So if you're not, if you're running, if you're in, if you've got a financial planning business and you've been going more than five years and you're not, not killing it, give up. <laughs> like, why bother? Like, if you've got your own business and you're not very profitable and funny. Well, you could have a people that want to have a lifestyle business. All those well, no, no. Well, I was just about to say, um, look, I don't think in this climate going forward, like all these licensees are jacking up their fees. I don't know if you can do license uh, lifestyle businesses anymore. Don't know. You might be able to see the Fortify business. I was actually, if I couldn't merge with another business, I was going to just keep it and work in it one or two days a week. Yeah. But the biggest problem I had 
well, number one, I could have the lifestyle business work in at one or two days uh, because I had the client base and they were all trained well and mm. processes. But the two days working a week, fine, but it would take seven days of my mind. Yeah. Yeah, it's always the hard thing about a business owner that you're always thinking, mm. thinking about the other. Like it was weird going because I've just got back from the States yesterday because I went up to podcast movement and the two and a half weeks ago when I left the States, it was a weird feeling, like packing up before I went away. Mm. I wasn't running around the office doing it. Yeah, anything. trying to. Like, yeah. It was so weird. I look forward to the day that I don't have that oh, scramble. Yeah, but how much like anxiety and pressure is there and you... Mm. Get on the plane, you hit flight mode, and you go, ah, oh, yes. But it just wasn't there. So I would just encourage you in any part of your life, if you are still listening to this um, rant, um, <laughs> be strategic, be intentional, hmm. be unapologetic. This is who we're serving. This is our fee. We are professionals. If you don't want to pay it, that's cool. Hmm. We're not for you. I'm happy to introduce you to someone else. That's it. Yeah. yeah. It's a shame that uh, Paddy's given up his business, but. Um, uh, yeah, you've, you've got to, you've got to know when the person is in the right, is in the right fit. So mate, uh, a couple of quick ones for you on the way out. So what's your biggest oops moment or stuff up? My biggest mistake was when I first started my business, I paid a thousand dollars for an advertising campaign in print. Right. And never got a phone call. Right. Mm. It could be I've spent a thousand dollars in Facebook advertising and never got it. No, but there was the wrong phone number on the ad. Oh, nice. Oh, that's gold. <laughs> and that's why you shouldn't borrow money to start a business because if I had borrowed money, I could have paid more on that advertising campaign and compounded the negative return and mistakes. <laughs> so that was the biggest stuff up. Yeah. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, don't chase the dollars and look after people. Very good. And finally, what is your spirit animal? A spirit animal? Oh, gee, I don't know. Meerkat. They're fun. Meerkat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Good pace. Good pace in the meerkat. Very good. Well, Mr. James, thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you. And sorry for making you edit a whole heap of stuff out that I had to... <laughs> Mate, you're supposed to be a professional. You're a professional podcaster. No, I'm not. The first podcast we're going to have to edit. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ben. Bye-bye.